बेस्ट टीचर्स के गाइडेंस में पढ़ना इजीयर होगा एग्जाम लाइफ अब से हर स्टूडेंट विनर होगा समझ आएगा तो मजा वेदांत लर्न लाइव ऑनलाइन टू अटेंड अ फ्री लाइव क्लास डाउनलोड दी एप नाउ Hi everyone good evening my name is Ankita Sharma and I welcome you in this amazing doubt series class for ninth we have been working really very really hard and thanks for the support that you are giving us in today's class everyone we are doing two important chapters of ninth in which i will be taking few of your doubts and here is the chapter name everyone today we are doing the natural resources and improvement in food resources so both the chapters are easy let's see how many doubts we have But before we begin the session, everyone, hit the like button, share with your friends, and subscribe to our amazing channel. Without wasting any time, everyone, let's start our class. And here's the first question, everyone. Right? Let's see. This is a current session, everyone. Okay. Before we start, we have this. So you can check. This is a current session, and the previous session was this. So if you have you have missed it out, everyone, go and check this out. And let's see. So here's the first question, everyone, on your screen. Explain the significance of the carbon cycle. So we know, everyone, carbon cycle is really very really important part of it, and it's a very valid question to ask for, right? So, see, let's answer answer this question, everyone. Now, what is a carbon cycle, everyone? We know carbon cycle is a very very important cycle in our environment, and it is there in our Ninth class in CRT textbooks. Let's understand this, everyone. Now, when we look at the carbon, everyone, we know it. Carbon dioxide production is there inside our planet Earth. Basically, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that helps in maintaining the temperature of our Earth. It traps the heat energy and maintains the temperature. Apart from it, carbon dioxide is being consumed or taken by the plants to give us oxygen. So, very very important gas that we have. right if you look at the cycle everyone if you look at this amazing cycle you will see that carbon dioxide which is there inside the atmosphere okay is taken up by the plants so we are going in this particular way we are considering that the carbon dioxide is present in our environment this carbon dioxide is everyone taken up by the plants to perform the process of photosynthesis right plants will take up the carbon dioxide and will give us the oxygen this carbon dioxide everyone will be taken up by the various animals animals respiration okay right this oxygen is taken by the animal respiration and animals also release the carbon dioxide which goes into the atmosphere again okay so from here carbon dioxide is there in the atmosphere plants take it releases the oxygen oxygen is taken by the animals for the respiration animal releases the carbon dioxide and it goes again into the atmosphere so over here we have a very small cycle let's see everyone over here when the plants take up the carbon dioxide it just goes inside the roots also in the soil also and when they die of course they will have some amount of the carbon dioxide in their body that will again will be going into the atmosphere okay there are dead animals waste products everything have carbon dioxide which goes and of course forms the fossil so that animals and everything everyone will be going down on the earth crust with the pressure and heat and it will become into the fossil which are again are the source of carbon dioxide clear everyone over here let's see from here that from this particular point there's more production of the carbon dioxide from the industries again from here it is going into the atmosphere okay so in a whole everyone if we see if we look at the cycle it will be clear to us that carbon cycle is a circular cycle as all cycles should be and from this is the way in which the carbon dioxide is being circulated in our earth environment okay here's a written text everyone so you can uh, take a screenshot of it and write in your examination okay i hope we are clear with it let's move ahead everyone so we have this question 
We are done with it. Let's see the question number two, everyone. The question two is what is hybridization in plants? Name the type of hybridization. So very, very easy and very, very important questions, everyone. What is hybridization? Hybridization is nothing but everyone. The mixing, right? Genetically, mixing of the two different characteristic features and making it a new one, right? Though it looks like a smiley O on a face, but what is happening over here? What we are doing actually, everyone, we are actually taking the genetic material, we are mixing them up, and of course, we'll have a new variety that is hybridization. Hybridization make mixing of the genetic material of two different varieties and getting something new out of it. In the categories, everyone, there are three different types. First is intervarietal. Variety, they are talking about the different variety, everyone. So here we have the different varieties of it, completely different varieties. Okay. Second example, interspecific. Different species. Okay, there could be different species like a donkey and a horse. Okay, but of the same genus. This will be that. And intergeneric. Two different genera are there. Completely. Completely two different types of animals or plants are being mixed together to give us a results. So this is hybridization everyone. Okay. Very, 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 very important question and very, very commonly asked question and a question that usually have lots and lots of doubts. Right. I hope you are clear with it everyone. If you are, hit the like button and let me see. Let me see everyone, we usually tends to like the content, right? And of course, we like to study here. And of course, there are the teachers who are working really very hard for you. So everyone, if you want to see yourself on this particular slide, and if you want to flourish yourself, if you want to gain a lot of knowledge, everyone, Vedanta is a place for you, where we have such an amazing teachers, right? So chemistry is taken by the Anubha ma'am. Maths is taken by the Gopal sir and physics, your favorite Abhishek sir. So what we are doing everyone, we are working really very hard for you so that you can achieve your goals. And this you just don't need anything from your side, just a like button, share with your friends and definitely everyone comment down how you like our videos. I will be talking more about the important courses that we have everyone for you so that you can get amazing marks in your examination. So stay tuned till the end of this video everyone and let's see the next question. Here we have the next question everyone on your screen and that's question number 3. Explain the process of nitrogen fixation. A very very important question commonly asked in the examination and majority of you will get confused in this question because ma'am, ammonification kya hai, nitrite kahan pe aata hai, nitrite kya tha. So let's understand this whole process everyone. Till that time you can take a screenshot of this everyone and let's start. So we know everyone that nitrogen is present in our atmosphere. It's the highest percentage of the gas that we have on our planet earth, right? This nitrogen cannot be taken directly either by plants or by animals. We cannot take nitrogen directly. So there has to be a way. There has to be a way, right? In our A standard everyone, we have talked about it that during the lightning process, the nitrogen actually broke, broke down and come to the soil surface. That's one of the way. The other way is with the help of nitrogen fixing bacteria. And of course, fungi also play a small part into it. And let's see how this whole process is being done into our environment. Here everyone, nitrogen will be there. Okay. There are leguminous plants which have nodes on them. In these nodes everyone, we have nitrogen fixing bacteria. These nitrogen fixing bacteria will be taking up the nitrogen, will be breaking it down so that the plants can take it. Once the plant have the nitrogen everyone, we can get it and the other animals will also get the nitrogen who are depending upon the plants. So first thing, put a tick mark over here everyone, we got the first amount of nitrogen. From here, what will happen? See animals eat, they will get. After this everyone, there are the decomposition, we have fungi and bacteria, right? So even when the plants are dying, when the plants are dying, there are fungi and bacteria who will be taking up the nitrogen from them, right? This nitrogen everyone will be broken down 
by the nitrifying bacteria into the nitrites okay and the process is called as nitrification the process is called as nitrification moving back here everyone this is coming into the hair also so the nitrogen that has been fixed okay is coming over here ammonification will be occurring over here and same thing occur they will be converted into the nitrite and this nitrite again by the nitrifying bacteria will be converting into the nitrates and nitrates everyone will move into the atmosphere with the help of denitrifying bacteria they will break it down and of course moves to the environment in a nitrogen state e easy right it's super easy and from here it will get assimilated also into the soil plants will take it and this whole cycle will keep on going right everyone so take a screenshot everyone they have mentioned the azobacter and the rhizobium are the important bacteria that help in fixing of the nitrogen right let's see everyone you can take a screenshot of it important point everyone is the symbiotic what is the meaning of symbiotic relationship we usually get confused with it symbiotic relationship means everyone in which two organisms are living in a harmony with each other both of them are helping each other and both of them have the benefits so in a case over here the bacteria is getting a home it is getting nutrient from the plants and plants in turn getting the nitrogen so both of them plants and the bacteria everyone are there in the symbiotic relationship and they are doing good for both of them right let's see the next question everyone so here question number four everyone on your screen differentiate between mixed cropping mixed farming or the crop rotation so very very important topic let's see everyone the first that we are discussing here is the mixed cropping as the word suggests mixed it will have a combination of different types of crops over here everyone two to more crops are grown everyone remember two to more crops are grown on the same particular land examples wheat gram and wheat mustard are the common example now what are the advantage of it everyone the farmer are not at a very higher risk maybe by any misfortune if this crops are getting destroyed the farmer can go in the market and sell this also so that they are not completely dependent on at least one type of the crop so it reduces the risk give insurance against the failure and definitely helps the farmer to have some kind of income from the farming So this is everyone mixed farming. Now next everyone is the crop rotation. Now crop rotation everyone, as the word says itself, crop has been rotated. So depending upon the climatic conditions and the soil conditions, everyone, the farmer will be rotating the different types of crops during the year. So for example, everyone on the screen we can say, in the first year, the farmer grew the malt and the barley. Okay. Second year they grew the springs. and the wheat third year potatoes and the fourth year repeating the year the barley and the malt this is how the crop rotation is done everyone in a proper rotation there will be a chance for the farmer to get more money and apart from it it's a very secure way any of the crops is fail if any of the crop is failing the farmer still can go back and get the money from the different type of crop crop rotations is very very important very highly practices technique that the various farmer uses so please take a screenshot of it everyone here right do take it and yes it's a very important question everyone so they can ask you in the examination write the difference between a crop rotation and mixed cropping there's intercropping also so they can ask you to write the difference between the three of them very easy everyone you can do that also let's see the amazing courses everyone that we have for you as i told i will be talking about it everyone now here is a time we are where you have your final examination i know that you have been studying yearly throughout the year you have been studying with lot of efforts but now you feel that you just need a quick revision you feel that you just need a quick quick revision absolutely 
in the improvement in the food resources. So everyone, we have the micro courses for you. And you can use this code over here, A-N-K-I-M-I-C, and you will get amazing discounts. And more than that, everyone, the micro courses are less than or up to 11 rupees. So what are you thinking, everyone? Go on the website and check the amazing micro courses that we have for you. So we will be there, everyone, the amazing teachers that I was talking about, we'll be there to help you, right? Before that, if you go, please watch the video till the end. We have one more question to do that is differentiate between a manure and a fertilizers. Now, everyone, we know that manures are more natural way and fertilizers are more of chemicals. Fertilizers are very harmful. Why? Because it will be causing a lot of water pollution and as well as the soil pollution. Manures are very friendly everyone, right? See, they are natural substance, organic substance, prepare and feel, provide hummus to the soil and of course, they are less rich in the nutrient. Whereas, they are rich in nutrient, does not humify the soil, prepare in factories, chemical substance, inorganic, salt. So, we have our advantages and disadvantages over here. So very easily you can write about the manure and the fertilizers everyone. Let's see. Yes, let's see the next question. We are done everyone with this, right? So throughout the year everyone, there is amazing 9th class series that was going on for you. So what you can do everyone, if you still have some doubts and if you still don't want to get the micro courses and you feel that you can study here. So here are the amazing courses for you everyone. So we have have the Umang for class 9th everyone. We have sprint 9th in which we have taken up questions which usually come in your examination. We have crash courses everyone and we have midterm series also for you. With this everyone I'll say bye bye. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to hit the bell icon everyone. So you will get the notifications when we are coming again. Hit the like button, share with your friends and subscribe to our amazing channel everyone. It's me Ankita Sharma saying you bye bye. Happy learning, lots of love from Vedantu. Bye bye everyone.